Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Many a True Nerd, and welcome to Sky Shines Bedlam. So, this is a game that is my understanding is it's kind of influenced by games like FTL and Convoy, except it's got this great big kind of beautiful bright Fallout kind of aesthetic. So like FTL crossed with Fallout. Like someone looked into my brain and tried to figure out what the perfect game in the world was and then went and built this. So I, I heard about this and then immediately panically started emailing the devs and just desperately tried to get hold of this game. And I finally got hold of it and I'm so excited because it involves a great big tank thing and mutants and people with what just looks like big fallout gorse rifles and everything's wonderful i should clarify this is a preview at the moment they're still kind of uh, finalizing this so um the final version of this launches on thursday so what you're seeing may not be entirely representative of the final game but should be pretty darn close so I've just watched um, the tutorials there. Um, the tutorials aren't interactive, they're just like little videos and they're like little low resolution videos. So I won't put those up, I will just get started and kind of go over what I picked up as we go and as I die. Because this is, you know, a roguelike and that's pretty much how they go your first few attempts. So let's do this, shall we? So this is how this works. Basically you have a dozer, which is a big tank thing and that you've got uh, humans who are travelling around it. So the dozers are attached to a particular race. So this is the human dozer, and like FTL, uh, all the other races have dozers too. That dozer's a massive bug. I want the massive bug dozer. That's beautiful. Oh, that's so lovely. So you've got all these other ones that we can unlock in time. But right now we've only got the human one, which does appear to be absolutely covered in explosive stuff, so that's good. Dozers not just how you travel around, dozers can also contribute to the battle, so that's what these abilities are. So I can spend resources to do a Skyshine Distillery. So that's some sort of debuff against my enemies. I can use the Trauma Cocktail. For, yes, uh, tissue regenerating nanonutrients. Excellent. So I can make my dozer's power uh, do healing. Or I could make it do a absorption or deflecting enemy attacks. Okay, so healing, defense, and debuff against the enemy. So this one's going to be, presumably we're starting off with some humans. So this is the legendary dozer constructed by the Mechanics Guild. The Bone Shaker was long believed lost the hazards of Bedlam. Until Byzantine Tycoon Rasputin Lazarus. Oh, that's a good name. That's, I, I'd love to change my name to Rasputin Lazarus. Discovered the ancient wreckage and rebuilt this incredible rolling fortress. So it's not even supposed to be like a tank, it's supposed to be like a full rolling fortress. That's very cool. And then we've got difficulty. Go easy, battles less challenging uh, for novice players. Learn to play on this level, unlocks and achievements cannot be earned. The lands of Bedlam are reasonably calm. Go normal, battles are challenging, unlocks and achievements can be earned. Oh, so that's an interesting twist. So you can play it on easy difficulty, but you're not allowed to unlock anything on that difficulty. You, you have to do things on the harder difficulties. Or Bedlam, battles are very challenging, odds are not in your favour. The lands of Bedlam quickly descended to chaos and the hardcore UI mode. No battle damage or attack info. Oh, I guess that means just less intelligence. Okay, do I start normal or do I start easy? Alright, let's just start easy for now because I don't know anything about this game. Like, if this is anything like FTL, easy is flipping challenging anyway. The Bone Shaker. Oh, I like the fact it gets a little kind of almost like wrestling style intro. So, this is the map. I'm starting here, up here in Byzantine. And I'm trying to get down here to Aztec City. Somewhere in this mysterious uncharted zone is the location of a rumoured utopia that may present the salvation of mankind. Oh, never go searching for a rumoured city that presents the salvation of mankind. It never actually is. It's always a, a trap or a dystopia or a disappointment or something. So what we need to do is we need to go through these areas. And we can kind of figure out roughly what's, uh, what's in them ahead of time. So if I hover over this one, this one's Heap which apparently belongs to the Cyborg. So some Bedlam inhabitants go Borg by incorporating discarded technology and war wear onto their bodies for tactical and our survival advantages. Alternatively, there is the Marauders, so roaming packs of barbaric marauders that will relentlessly pursue any brave traveller who venture into the wastelands for Byzantine. They don't sound particularly friendly, do they? Or we've got the Mutants. Some mutants are massive brutes covered with hardened hide of spikes or spurs, while others can spew flesh-melting fluids or launch armor-piercing spikes. I think we should probably just not we should probably just not go with them for now. Um let's go for these guys give us a lot of choice over here in half knot. I mean, often it's suggesting that cyborgs are not fundamentally hostile. 
It d doesn't say that they're fundamentally hostile, and they can be powerful allies if persuaded. So I would say, let's go this way, shall we? Yes, that seems reasonable. Okay, so to go this way, I expend one day. I expend 35 barrels, which is crude there, so the oil I'm carrying. And I expend 24 food, because I actually have to travel a distance. I've actually got at the top there 1,000 uh, oil and 1,000 food, so I feel like I'm okay for the minute. So let's go into Half Knot and make some cyborg friends, because they're going to be friends. And the dozer goes rolling on. The colossal dozer slowly trundles through the superstructure arteries of Byzantine, escorted by law regulators and flanked by an army of prominent now beam broadcasters, projecting the vehicle's impressive image across the surrounding Goliatron screens. Byzantine has been energised with excitement since Lazarus announced his plan to cross Bedlam, seeking the mythical Aztec city, though most citizens' involvement extends to simply wagering on the expedition's survival odds. The outer barricades part as the dozer begins its journey into the malevolent wasteland beyond the walls. So now we can only go one way, we need to head on for another three days. Another, ooh, okay, we already have to spend another 100 fuel and 72 food. This is going to start going down flipping quickly. Ah yes, and up here we've got our dozer upgrade system. So we can start upgrading our dozer as we go. So for bio research, we can consume less meat while traveling, i.e. food is more... Well, food I'm not too worried about for the minute, doesn't like the most important thing. Right now, uh, injured crew heal in 30 days. So I could improve that for five power cells. Deploying battle armaments, i.e. getting my dozer involved in the fight, I could make that more efficient. Although for the moment, engineering, so crude is used at 35 a day. Let's use five power cells to improve that. So now that's down to only 30 a day, and I can just keep upgrading that if I wanted to. Okay, that seems like a good starting point. Actually, let's just get bar research in. Ooh, use less meat. Um... Yeah, let's just... This seems like a sensible thing to invest in nice and early. Let's, let's get those up so we lose less meat and less crude. And let's move straight on to our next thing. And that also means I'm now using, yes, much less uh, much less crude. Oh, because that is... Um, the fact that that's 90 is because it's 30 times the three days it takes me to get there. I see. Right, let's head on our way. So off we go trundling. Trundling through the wasteland. Excellent. Shortly after leasing Byzantine, the dozer approaches a large obstruction of scrap metal in the road. The crew disembarks to inspect the debris, only to be suddenly surrounded by a group of sinister cyborgs. Don't call them sinister face, call them charming, and if they're slightly disfigured, rugged. That vehicle is the Snaz. Oh, blimey, you are you're pushing the limits of rugged there, mate. We're going to strip the gear and scrap the rest, but first, you pure fleshers gotta go. Oh, pure fleshers? Oh, lardy flipping da. Right, okay. So, here's how crew works, because unlike uh, FTL where you start off with very little crew, obviously I'm not just flying around a little ship here, I'm actually basically driving a massive fortress around. And that means I actually start off with these 16 crew right away, and the ability to gain more crew, though I'm guessing more crew means food is consumed faster. Uh, so what I can do is I can basically decide how many people I'm actually sending into the fight. As you can see below at the bare minimum I send in one. If I were to only send in one, so let's for the sake of argument just send in you. Yeah, sure, you seem cool. You've got you've got some sort of laser saw. That seems pretty cool. So if I were to literally just send in her and then I was to win, then I would basically get when I'd won the fight and I picked up some energy cells and some fuel and some meat. I'd get three times as many energy cells as usual, three times as much fuel as usual, and two times as much meat as usual, because I've won it with less people. I'm not sure there's a good law reason for that, but it kind of, it's an interesting system. But as I put more people in, obviously it'll be easier for me to win the fight, and I definitely won't lose it, or I'm less likely to, but the benefits will decrease. All of these people, by the way, in each of their classes are interchangeable, so this is purely based on... It's basically, you know, just based on aesthetics, whichever you like the look of most. So what I've got is I've got my dead eyes, who are basically... They function as snipers, so they do damage 5 at a range of 6, but they can't move very far. They've only got a move of 2, and they've only got 2 health as well. My frontliners, meanwhile, have a load more health at 10 health and can only do 2 damage, but they can move 6. So basically, they're big, tough, tanky sorts. And then your gunslingers and your trenches kind of seem to sit in the middle. So the gunslingers have health of 5, damage of 3, and a range of 3 to 4. 
Whereas the trenches still have range, but not quite as much range, but they have a health of 6 and damage of 4. So I think it just seems like reasonable that we just kind of take a couple of each. I'm basically going to pick who I'm going to fight based on who I happen to, you know, think I'd probably most date were we not in an apocalypse. So I think we'll take Terusa. Yep, Terusa, you seem pretty good. You can get down there. There's something about Hunch's insane squinting I think I quite like, so I think we'll take Huncher along. But I think before we do, because you get to rename all the characters, so first I'm just going to rename him Squinty. So he's now Squinty. Uh, you can just rename everyone you want. Uh, we've got Ambara here, which is fine, but that's hard, so she's just going to be Amy from now on. Meanwhile, Gygar's getting renamed MacGyver and he gets to come along too. So, yes, on that basis, I'll get... Ooh, but then I'll only get a number of normal number... You know what? First ever battle, let's go for four people and still take double fuel and double uh, food back. That seems fair to me. Okay, so these people in grey are mine, because my guys are actually prepared for this. So, unlike usual, I'm actually coming to... You know, I'm coming along in actually some decent armour, which is good. Okay, so we've got Amy here, who's my main person... Her main problem is, so Amy's my big tanky sort. She can run up to someone and then punch them in the face. So this guy, Deadeye, has two. I think he's only got two health. Amy could just run up to him and punch him in the face. Which strikes me as a really sensible thing for her to do. Okay, Amy goes there. And then presumably punches him in the face. Oh, Amy, well flipping dumb. Now, the enemy gets a turn. The thing is, um, you get a turn then the enemy, then basically you can do two things. So there's nothing to stop me saying I could make, you know, Squinty move and MacGyver move, and I wouldn't actually have to make, uh, I wouldn't actually have to kind of do all the actions with one. I just wanted to finish them off while I was here. So what have we got here? Trencher, who's got six. We've got, oh, it's just, um, they don't actually have names. They just have their ranks, which is actually quite useful. Uh, so the Gunslinger has five health and can do uh, two health back. And the five, two back... And six and two back. Okay, fine. Uh, this is a bonus thing, which I should go and get before the battle ends. But let's probably finish off a couple of these guys first. Okay, Terusa, as a sniper, even though he is standing next to you, can you just... Oh, no, you can't. You can only snipe someone who's actually f sufficiently far away from you. I see. I'm seeing the problem here. So you actually can't snipe at that person. Okay, um, so it's not just, uh, it's not just like any range up to five. She's actually got to be standing sufficiently far away and she can't move very far either. Okay, so dead eyes are potentially of limited usage because you don't get to like choose your starting position. So they might be a little bit more difficult. What about you, Squinty? Have you got a shot at him? Okay, taking a shot at that guy. He f returns fire because those guys do. Oh, and that guy's a bit weak. Squinty's a bit weak. Okay. So, MacGyver, Squinty I'm worried about. Squinty I'm more than a little bit worried about because he's at one health. If Squinty moves over here, he's still got a clean shot at this guy because he's uh, at the guy over here because he's still got the thing. So Squinty needs to move and then take a shot. So Squinty move over there and then take that shot. And he goes down and now Squinty's a bit safe. That guy runs in. So does that one. They don't take a shot. Now, let's start moving my people into position so they're covered. You, she takes up a position. That means there's, the enemies have a chance to miss. Amy, meanwhile, can run over here and she's got tons of health. So she'll be a good person to just start tanking. So she goes in. Oh, and he had a flipping shotgun. Ouch. Okay, so he took an action. He took a shot. Then they took a move. So two actions per turn. Two actions per turn, and you can, if you want to, just kind of move all your people. Ah, now this is an interesting move. Terusa could step around the corner and then have a shot at this guy. My understanding is if a character's not in cover, it's a guaranteed hit. So, Terusa, move around the corner. Meat. You picked up some meat there. Now take the shot at that guy. Oh, a nice shot indeed. He goes forward, takes another shot at Amy. Amy is fine. He's got four health. Which makes me think that if I could just get my sniper into a decent position. Can you not? Oh, darn. No, no, I don't think he actually can. Uh, okay, that's a bit of a concern. So this guy can do four damage. What could this guy do? Oh, this guy can do four as well. Oh, that's fine then. So if you just go here and then take a shot at this guy. 
That's all right. So go here, attack him. Lovely. You're my shotgun man. Beautiful. And a cyborg comes up to me and says, we'll get the gear repaired and you'll get smithereened. Oh, I think he was, um, we'd, we'd kind of blown his arm off. So I think uh, one of them was warning that he'd come back for more later. So we got double uh, fuel, double meat and 15 energy cells. Lovely. Okay, so that's the fight. You got to, I think you've got to be really, really flipping careful uh, of these fights because you don't start with much health and you don't get to choose uh, where you start from. And Dead Eyes particularly, though they do an insane amount of damage, cannot move very far and are very flimsy. So I kind of want to just take a little jaunt to these exclamation points for a single day's travel, uh, 30 fuel and 21, yeah, 21 uh, meat. I can just kind of pop to one of those. Or if I'm ready to actually move on, I can head down this way properly for a full six days travel, or I could actually, if I wanted to, head into Heap. But Heap strikes me as a bit of a long way round, so I'm not sure I necessarily want to do that. Let's go and visit one of these little locations and just see what it does. Yes, let's go and have a look, see. And, ah, the thing at the bottom there. So basically, as time goes on, the amount of bedlam in bedlam slowly goes up. Um, tension rises, and I'm guessing things get nastier as that happens. The crew explores the area. They discover a path burrowed in the ground. The surface is scorched as if some kind of otherworldly aircraft once landed here. The end of the path, almost entirely buried in the terrain, is a vessel of unknown origin. What is it? Uh, it seems entirely intact despite likely being here for ages. The surface of the vessel is entirely smooth with no apparent damage or entry points. The hull suddenly begins to emit a peculiar humming noise as the crew approaches. Cut through the hull or leave. Alright, let's find out just how flipping mean this game is. Cut through the hull. Also, what's this one up here? I don't know what this measure is up here. This people 1000. I know that I've got that's time, that's fuel, that's meat, that's power cells. I don't know what 1000 is. Is that the number of people who are actually inside? Have I actually got 1000 people in this damn thing? It's just only 16 of them are my big away team. Right, cut through the hull. The crew's fusion torches are unable to even leave a mark on the vessel's alloy casing, nor does a barrage from their weapons. It seems clear the crew will not be entering the vessel with the tools at hand. The crew leaves the craft behind, returns to the dozer. Okay, so that one, basically nothing happened, really. Uh, nothing really happened. Uh, so you can, I've just kind of used up some resources for no reason there. But again, like FTL, you can do that sometimes. You can just kind of waste a little turn. Right, let's just use another day. Let's try and find some more. I'm trying to figure out just how mean this game is. Because whether it's like Curious Expedition Caves mean, where you just sort of die, basically. Or FTL mean, where sometimes you'll die, but only if you make what does appear to be a bit of a stupid decision. Generally, sensible-ish decisions or kind decisions will be rewarded. Or if this game's a bit generous. So, in an area of derelict buildings, the sounds of a battle taking place on a nearby rooftop. Let's investigate the battle. And they discover a clutch of marauders engaged in a heated battle with a group of cyborgs. That's good! We can help the cyborgs against the marauders and a cyborg will join us. You got some rocks getting between the everlasting discord with this bunch of scuzzers. Got a smithereen you right along with them. Really? Okay, fine. We'll join the marauders then. I was so up for joining you, but if you're going to be a mean face about it, I guess not. Ah, I see the problem. So the characters that took injury last time are going to take a while to be fixed up. So, um, Amy, you're going back in the dozer, and so are you, Squinty. Okay, but that's fine, because Artema can just kind of come in. That's absolutely no problem at all. And, uh, we, who else do we need? We also need to bring along a new gunslinger. Uh, Constance. Yes, you seem reasonable. I'd rather have Squinty with me, but that's fine. Oh my goodness, every single one of these people has their own flipping backstory. Oh my goodness. Right, what's MacGyver's backstory? He was assigned to protect Jericho Thrice, a headline anchor acting as an embedded journalist on the dozer. Formerly one of Byzantine's prime reporters, Thrice was disgraced after an embarrassing public incident involving a dozen skin sims, and he's desperate to reclaim glory by chronicling the journey. Oh dear. You don't want to get involved with skin sims, MacGyver, for goodness sake. So it looks like there's only three of them. What have we got? We've got a frontliner. Okay, he's chilling out there. We've got ourselves a trencher there. Trenchers are... They're the shotguns, aren't they? And then we've got a gunslinger there. All right, fine. We've got... A, ooh. That looks like a... That does distinctly look like a bomb, to be honest. I feel like we probably shouldn't kind of get involved with that, really. Uh, okay, what if we go and pass by this. How much health do you have? 
And how far can you move? You can't even move far enough to get to that. Let's do... You're just a frontliner. So how far are you going to be able to get? You can only get to here. So if I move my frontliner to here to grab the um, to grab this crude. crude. Lovely. That's some crude right there. That's power cells. And that's meat. And that's... I'm going to stay away from that just for the moment. Just in case. And then I want my sniper to be at the back here. I'm just going to keep my sniper at the back here. Okay, those are my two turns. Let's just bring my main gunslingers up a little bit here. Why did they just take a small amount of damage? They just took damage. Why did they take damage? Is that what cyborgs do? I don't know. Never mind. Right, let's do... Let's move you over to here and start battering. Actually, no, hang on. Can you kill that guy in one shot? I think you're able to. You, sniper. Snipers are amazing. Go. Kill him. Oh, yes. Yeah, snipers are amazing. And in comes that person. Okay. You could also be killed in what? Actually, yeah. I can just straight up murder you. Um, bye. Veteran. Veteran. Oh, my goodness. She looks awesome. And she's got five health. Tarusa, you are the best person ever. Can you just... You just attack again. Just just do it a second time. That That's fine. Oh my goodness. That's an amazing thing. That's the greatest thing. Oh. Oh dear. You, <laughs> I don't think you stand a bloody chance, mate. Right. Uh, MacGyver. Have you actually done anything yet? What have you actually done? You've got a kill. Fine. We'll move you to here. And let you get the kill, right? Yeah, that seems sensible. Go. Kill. Lovely. That's two kills for them. Next time, we're just going to bring bigger guns. Yes, scuzzers. Well, that's very rude of you. Right, let's keep investigating these. A formerly populated area. The crew comes across a group of vessels. Judging by the equipment and the logos of the Miskatronic Omnidimensional Research Firm, they must belong to corporate scientists from Byzantine doing research in Bedlam. Okay. Moments later, panicked scientists rush from the nearby buildings, Desperately call for your attention. Do they need rescuing, bunny chats? Oh, you've got a lot of blood on you. Hoy travellers, we must beg your assistance. Our colleagues were collecting important data on the roof of this structure when they were accosted by a rather combative clan of cybernetically enhanced natives. Do you want me to kill the cyborgs, bunny chance? Uh, they were using valuable fusion technology to conduct research. It must not fall into the hand of undesirables. Okay. Could you extinguish the threat? Yes, but you better be giving me some of this valuable fusion technology when we're done or else. You pure fleshers want to get in the way of our fair acquisition? I guess we'll indulge ourselves in some extra carnage. All right, fine. You're going to die then. Right. Artema can be swapped out for Zebraston. That's fine. Let's bring him in. Everyone else is fine. MacGyver gets to stay in. Constant gets to stay in. Yep, this team is fine. Let's go. Permadeath is a real thing, says the loaded screen. Excellent news. Okay, four on four this time. Interesting. Right, let's send Sebrasson over here just to get hold of this here oil. Crude. That's fine. Con MacGyver, you've got pretty good health. Uh, Constant, you've got alright health. MacGyver, you go forward too. You've got more health than most people. Fine. Now what are they going to do? Two people charge forward. That's fine. You can have a you can have a clear shot at any of them. Yes, you are. Right, sniper, go. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love the visceral animation. That's lovely. Two more of them running. I should start bringing along a second dead eye, actually, just to start training them up. Uh, right, you go over and collect those power cells. That's lovely. And you can head over here and take cover, ready to start dealing with these guys over here. Take cover there. Oh, they've is that he's got a sniper too. They've totally got a sniper, haven't they? That's a sniper. But I might just be able to take him out. If I just move to... Wait, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. If I just move to here and then just shoot him, I can take him out. But I've got six health. He can do three damage. And what can you do? You can't get to me in time. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the shot. Straight through. Dead. Beautiful. Oh, and you've become a veteran too. Well, that's fine. I've now got... I've probably now have got a... Oh! Oh! Oh, no! They can do double attacks because he didn't have to move. Oh, well! Who just died? Was that you, MacGyver? That was MacGyver that just died. Really sorry, MacGyver. 
I didn't mean to. Right, let's let's get some revenge here. You die. My best sniper will destroy you. Right, smack him a bit. And then what's he going to do in return? He's going to move and shoot. And you will... Let, let's get one of these guys upgraded. We desperately need... Uh, I think we need a tank to be better upgraded. Okay, gears malfunctioning. We'll be back. Fleshes, whatever you say. All right, be careful. Remember, they can attack twice in one go. You better give me something good, scientists. Uh, so, uh, endless grats to you. It's very informal of you scientists. Hopefully that's a bit more formal in the future. And appears our equipment was damaged. Oh no, we have ample supply of power cells to share. Yeah, and let's invite them. Invite them onto the dozer. Do you want to join? Attempting offer. But our allegiance lies in the mysteries of the region. We do appreciate the rescue. Best journey to you. Oh well, never mind. Okay, so we got... To oh, we got 30 power cells out of that too. Lovely. All right, so we've had our first death there. That's a shame. Right, let's move on, shall we? I think we're okay for the moment to actually move on to the next area proper. So let's go forward. Deeper into the territory. Time ticks by and... Oh, that chaos meter is starting to go past. The dozer travels across the road. You begin receiving reports of disruption among the passenger population. The problem seems to stem from the numerous passengers claiming to be someone called Quindam Reich. The matter has begun to cause disorder. Oh... Blimey. Um, have Ambara Spectre investigate. Yes, um, that's highlighted in yellow, which I'm assuming that means that's one of my people who is upgraded. Why is everyone claiming to be Quindam Reich? Ambara Spectre is genetically bred as a protector created by Majestic Industries, and Quindam Reich is a mysterious mogul who purchased her services when he secured passage on the dozer. She's been particularly useful in diffusing the situation. Okay. Reich is so secretive, I'm the only one who knows what he really looks like. He believes another passenger from Byzantine is hunting his head, and he hired a whole bunch of decoys to throw his pursuer off the track. Obviously, they're a bit too enthusiastic about the task. Okay, Reich is as influential as he is paranoid, but he wasn't wrong, and I already got the headhunter scoped. I'll get the sitch squared. With the matter seemingly resolved, the dozer continues along the road. Excellent! We didn't need to sacrifice anyone there. Let's head into new territory. Let's find ourselves some mutants. I'm going to head straight off in, over into mutant territory. I want to find some... Let's find something new while we're going along here. As the dozer travels along the road, it approaches a high cliff wall on one side. Written on the wall are the words, Viscera does not rule Bedlam. I'm sure Viscera does. Oh, lovely. Uh, beneath that, another's remark is scrawled in much larger letters with red paint. Yes, he does. Lined up along the bottom of the cliff, beneath the second message are a dozen decapitated head planted on spikes. Well, Viscera, Viscera is doing well at uh, keeping control there. The second statement seems fairly clear. The doze continues along the road. All right, I'm sure we'll run into Viscera at some point. And we are, ooh, what's this? A mysterious thing. Oh, it's an elite. Uh-oh, that's an elite according to this thing over here. So that's a person who if you fight them, they're really, really tough. But if you defeat them, they'll join you. So, I should probably just send everyone in to deal with that situation. Yes, let's go fight an elite, I've got apparently nothing else I can do other than backtracking. King Viscera sent Biv Trumbull to splatter your soft little fleshes with my Roto Cannon. Gonna be messy. Oh, I was looking for mutants. Why, why are you a cyborg? I've had enough flipping cyborgs. Right, um, you. You person over there. Get, get back out of here. Okay. Now, let's bring a new guy in here. Yep, we're gonna need we're gonna need our best people for this. I'm gonna bring another Deadeye in, actually. I'm gonna bring a second Deadeye in, because they seem to be pretty damn powerful. If I can just keep her at the back, that should be fine. So Morrigan can come in too. I'm willing to accept that that means that we've got like we've got a little bit less we're gonna get less goodies out of it, but I feel I feel okay about it. So I think we should be alright here. Let's go with five people. Okay, so we've got ourselves Biv here, and he's also got a trencher with him, but that's actually it. Okay, that's not too bad. He can, ooh, he can do flipping seven damage. <sighs> okay, gotta be careful of him. However, you can do seven damage as well, so I feel like this is actually going to be, our sniper is going to be pretty damn important, as is our secondary sniper, Morrigan. Artema can take one hit from this guy. So therefore, probably ought to go and hide over here. You can move this far, Artema. Move over here. You're tanking, okay? That's your job. You're going to hide over here and hopefully draw the fire. Artema, and then Teresa, you start moving in that direction. Is he going to move? 
Yes, he is. Okay. What are we going to do with you? We can... Actually, I think we might be able to one-shot... I think he might have just run straight into a territory where we can one-shot him. Yes, I think we can. Um, so, Terusa. One-shot for you. And, uh, Morrigan, you're new, aren't you? But have a good first day. Um, oh, can you not... Oh, no, not quite. Um, can anyone else get a shot in? He can do seven damage, but he can't actually aim that far. So that's not too bad. Okay. So what can you do? Can you reach any of my people? You can reach you can reach Dens, the uh, the new person who I've brought along who's my kind of tanky person. I'll draw fire by moving him to here. Yeah, okay. He takes one damage for some reason. You run forward and do nothing oh why didn't he run forward and do something maybe oh he, can he not because he's only got he's got very limited range right now who's going to be allowed to get this kill it's four damage what can you do you can only do three damage you can do five but that's not that useful at this exact moment in time uh oh i've got no one who can do four damage who can actually hit him this turn you can only do three damage uh oh Right, okay, this is where potentially I'm going to start looking at my dozer for help for the first time. So, the dozer for help, I can call in a weapon strike, or I can ask for help. So, I'm going to call in some defensive skills here, because I'm worried about the damage I'm going to take. So, let's call in the defensive shield. So, the blitzer screen. So, the crew will take reduced damage while this is active. Okay, that seems reasonable. Or, I can call in a wounded crew recover 2 health. Alternatively, I can call in a potent intoxicating liquid causes drunkenness, drunkenness and violence. I don't understand. You know what? I'm just going to call in my defensive skill. Yes, call into the defensive skill. Everyone's now picked up a defensive skill because the dozer's now protecting them from afar. Now, you have five damage. Can you by any chance do something that lets you hit that person for five? Yes, you can. That seems reasonable. Um, but if I move you and take that shot, then I've still got the problem that nobody can flipping do the damage to you next turn. So as this guy can only do three, I'm going to let Constance take this, next, this shot here. Okay. And now hopefully... That's fine. Three damage. What's your second move? Three to you as well. Okay, he did double damage with that. That's okay. That's not too bad at all. So, uh, Artemis, how many kills have you got? Zero. Dens, how about you? Also zero. So if I were to... Oh, you've got three. You've only got three. How much damage do you do? So this guy can do three damage and she's only got two health. Oh, I'm worried I'm going to lose my flipping. Okay, right. Equalizer again. Um, restore health. Yep, I know. I know I have to waste energy doing this. But everyone goes up. That's lovely. I need to finish you off. Dens, would you like to do the honors? Yep. He goes down. He loses health. Oh, he did four. How did he do four? Bastard. I thought he only did... Oh, do they sacrifice... Is that how cyborgs work? They sacrifice health to do additional... Right. Right, well, let's start building a new sniper then. The machine gods failed us, but not next time. Chumbo. Oh, I lost my elite sniper. And as a result, all right, I give. You got the best of old Biv Trumbull. I'll ride with you. Maybe it's the best chance of wiping that bossing Dregger King Viscera off the map. So he's joined the dozer crew. Now what is this over here? That is, oh, a big supply of crude oil. So let's go, let's go and find a big supply of crude oil and see what that's like. Because I feel like we could use a big supply of crude oil. Though also, I could get my crew healing faster. Let's get the crew healing faster. I'm feeling like they're not healing fast enough at the minute. And let's also spend five power cells being more efficient to deploy stuff. Ooh, it starts lighting up as you upgrade it. That I quite like. Uh, yes, let's just get the crew healing better. That seems sensible. Lovely. 24% faster. Happy with that. Let's go investigate the crude oil thing. Okay. 
Oh, we're into, we're beyond, uh, so the Bedlam level at the bottom is going, we're going into guarded territory now. A recent seismic event has created a large crevasse in the unstable terrain. The rift is so deep that it struck a pocket of raw crude, which has partially filled the gap in the brittle earth. I'm guessing we're not going to be the only person who wants it. You're fortunate enough to be the- Oh, we are the first person to discover this coveted source of fuel. The dozer siphons off the crude pool nearly dry and departs before any unwanted competition arrives. Yay! What happened? 300 crude! Nice! Love it. Alright, good. That's magnificently good news. Right, let's go find a fight so I can try out this new guy who's just joined and figure out- I'm guessing he's one of the, uh- Wait, no, he can't be one of the, um, the tanky sorts because he's- he acts more like the shotgun guy, except he's got a minigun for whatever reason, so yes. As the crew explores the area, they come across a vast expanse of blackened sand. Okay, strange rock formation. Watch there. The crew trudges through the charred dust. As they draw nearer, they realise the rocks are actually the buried remains of a huge vehicle. The crew recognises it from the Dozer's historical records. It's another Dozer, built long ago by the Mechanics Guild. Okay, can we get anything from it? Uh, much smaller and lighter than Bone Shaker, this dozer was a rare attempt by the guild to incorporate aggressive techniques with advanced weapons. The Reconciler often served as a convoy scout to identify and obliterate the multitude of threats encountered in the cursed lands of Bedlam. The Reconciler is now just a seared husk, obviously rendered inoperative by whatever powerful device scorched this area. The crew attempts to enter for a small breach in the hull, only to find the interior devastated. However, they do discover that one of the Reconciler's offensive battle equalizers still somehow remains intact. Yes, yes I do want to install this damage multiplying technology. So the Quad Obliterator has been installed as a battle equalizer, oh yes. I don't know what that means but it's very good news. Ah, so we can check out our thing here, right. So this guy who apparently just gets up to full health automatically, I'm, go I'm going to let him be keep being called Biv. Um, so that's fine. So he is a gunslinger. So he does damage 7, has health 11. Uh, does he not get to become a veteran? Uh, no, he's already an elite, so that's fine. So he doesn't get to upgrade. The rookies get to become uh, veterans in 3 kills, uh, but that guy, because he's already an elite, doesn't get to. So Constance, I think you can have a rest, and Biv, you can move into the standard team, and then you can be part of our, uh, you can be part of our standard team, I think. I think that's very fair. Meanwhile, the Equalizer amplifies the penetrating power of crew weapons for devastating quadruple damage. What? Oh my goodness, yes. Oh my goodness. Right, let, let's find a fight so we can kill some people. The crew explores the area. Their attention is drawn to the nearby sounds of voices and lilting music. Let's go murder it. They crest a hill and discover a structure in the ravine beyond. It looks like some kind of gargantuan mutated gourd that also appears to be doubling as a place of business. Blimey, sign on the plate of scrap metal outside proceeds Madam Grunker's Pleasure Pod. There are several human patrons milling around the area, while a group of mutants are manning formidable fusion turrets to dissuade any unwanted behaviour. Let's approach. I want to I want to attend the pleasure pods. As the crew approaches the entrance, a burly armed mutant blocks passage. You mort be wanting to pleasure? Haggle for entry. Um, okay, I'm guessing that you'll want meat. I'm going to offer you some food. That'd be good enough. Enjoy the pleasure, morts. Okay, the crew... At I'm looking forward to the, ple the mutant pleasure pod. The crew enters a large area with a series of chambers on the outer wall, each with organic curtains that allow entry and exit for patrons. In the centre of the room is a green stump with numerous holes on its surface. A female mutant attendant approaches. Oh, I'm getting excited here. Greets to you, Morts. Be poking an arm into the slugwood and to be feeling the sweet sting of bliss. Yes, let's reach into... I'm feeling... I'm, I'm getting more worried about this situation now. But there were human patrons here before I showed up to so this. Can't be too... Dis, you know, it can't be too disastrous. Each crew places an arm into the stump. They are jabbed by something within. Moments later, their heads begin swimming with lustful sensations. An attendant leads each of them to an outer chamber... The crew's consciousness fades into a haze of ecstasy. Details beyond that are fuzzy. Sometime later, the crew awakens feeling completely rejuvenated, while vague memories of euphoric encounters with strange life forms dance through their heads. The crew returns to the dozer, exhilarated from the bizarre experience. Okay, that cost us 45 meat, and we may well have gained some mutant STDs, I don't know. But I don't know, we went to a, we went to a nice mutant brothel and everything was fine. 
As the crew cautiously wanders between toxic slag pools, they reach a rise overlooking some kind of bizarre lodge. A number of mutants are seen heading toward the structure, which seems alive. Let's attack them! Yes, attack! Attack! Here be Hippo Morts poking their ugly faces in tribe affairs, they be making good fertilizer. You, you have some flipping nerve calling me ugly, mate. Right, I think I'm happy with the situation that we've got right now. Uh, yeah, those four people, including my new specialist. Let's go do this. Okay, what have we got here? If there's only, are there only three of them, what can they do? We've got two health, two damage, two, two health, three damage. Oh, I'm not too worried by any of these guys, to be honest. Uh, but okay, let's uh, let's start just whipping up some activity here. You can go through here. You can't. You can't get to me. You can't get to me. You can't get to me. Fine. Let's just move you forward, ready for battle. And Maygrim, actually, you know, you go for. Oh, what the heck? Oh, he takes up four spaces because he's so massive. That's the best thing. That's so cool. I love it. Uh, okay. So you can take up this space and then just murder this guy. He said, I don't really want you to murder that guy because I'd rather someone else did it. You can do four damage, right? Can we get you into a situation where you can do that? No, let's just keep moving you forward. And you can move to cover. Yep, take cover. Ooh, do mutants get healing? Is that what they do? They get healing, is that it? Yes, I think that's what just happened there. So, he now has four health. Oh, can they heal beyond their maximum? They've all got four health now. How Do they they do they have any max HP, or do they just literally keep healing forever? Right. That's intriguing. Right, well, I think we need to do a little bit of a hit to you. You can do zero damage, two damage, five damage. Okay, well, let's just hit him with a stick then. Oh, I couldn't hit him with a stick because I'd used up my thing. Right, okay. Now, Sniper, you, you don't need to move, do you? No, you're fine. Uh, you can just... Hang on, can you do anything? No, you can't do anything right now. Uh, could you? Can I move you into a situation? Yes. Let's move you there and kill that guy. There. Kill. Lovely. He's up to flipping six health. Right, mutants are worrying. Mutants are a little bit worrying here. And if I move to... Right, what can you do? You can do five damage. That's a dead eye. He can do five damage. Right, he's got six health. I can do seven. I'm just going to move forward and take him out. Beautiful. Oh, we literally shot the skin off him. He's up to flipping seven health at this point. Blimey. Right, seven health. Can you help out with this? Yes, take a, take a shot. He can do... It's saying he can do zero, but I don't believe that for one second. If I move you to here, take a shot. Oh, it was a miss because he was in cover. And now he's up to flipping eight. Oh, and Dens is in trouble. Oh, and Dens is oh, really, really in trouble. Right, okay. You need to... How many kills have you got? You've had three kills. Right, okay. This is a good chance for me to use my new thing. Four times damage. Yes, quad obliterator. You... Do 20 damage to him, please. Oh, yes. You are a veteran now. We got a new veteran sniper. 134 fuel as well. Lovely. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I'm feeling good about this run so far. We've made some mistakes. We've lost a couple of people, including, sadly, MacGyver. More of this probably coming on Thursday this week because I absolutely bloody love this sort of thing. And I definitely want to do a little bit more of it yet and see how far I can get on this first little run. We've had good luck. We've had bad luck. Let's see how far we can push it all. But in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Bedlam. And this sort of thing is very much my sort of thing. Thank you very much and goodbye.